Good morning, good morning, church. Good morning, children. Welcome to Sunday service. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to His very sanctuary. For our call to worship today, can I invite all of us to stand to our feet and read it together? Okay, before we begin our time of worship, we will be reading portions of scripture from Psalms 149. Starting from verse 1. Join me, okay? Start. Praise the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord and His praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Israel shall be joyful in His Maker. The sons of Zion shall rejoice in their King. They shall praise His name with dancing. They shall sing praises to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He will glorify the lowly with salvation. The godly ones shall be jubilant in glory. They shall sing for joy even on their beds. The high praises of God shall be in their mouth. In verse 9 it says, This is an honour for all His godly ones. So church, let us praise the Lord. Amen. Come, let's clap our hands as we invite the Lord into this holy place this morning. Our hands and worship you. Open up. 
Thank you, Lord. You know, this morning I was reminded, I was reminded of what Paul said to rejoice always and pray continually in every, every circumstance. And last week, just last week during Easter Sunday, we were reminded of why, why we can rejoice in every circumstance. Because our God came down to this earth full of sin, full of death, and He died and rose again and He conquered death and gave us something we can hope for eternally even when things don't make sense can i hear an amen to that church amen, amen. and this set you know as i was preparing it the theme of the set was for youth and i thought you know what do youth do best that that i want to get the church to do and i was reminded you know in the bible there's someone who's not really a youth you know, his name is King David. And what did he do when he praised the Lord? He danced before the Lord. Yes, that's right. He danced before the Lord. You know, I know King David is not a youth, but who here can I get those who are 20, 26 and under to raise your hands? 26 and under. <laughs> yeah, all right, you guys. I'm going to be up here on stage dancing. You guys are going to dance with me as well, okay? Can I get those who are 62 and under to raise your hand as well? Yeah, take comfort in the fact that King David is around your age as well through his life, and yet he still danced before the Lord. Can I get everyone, the children of God, to raise your hand? Yeah, today we are going to learn and relearn for some of us to worship the Lord, not just with our voices, not just with our hearts, but with our bodies as well. Okay, so for those of us who are my generation, okay, you know, back then we had this pastor called Pastor Kevin. And this Pastor Kevin taught us a dance in Frontline Youth. And I'm going to teach you guys a little bit of a modified variation of that dance that we can sing and praise the Lord together. All right, are we ready, church? All right, I mean it again. Are we ready, church? All right. Okay, so this is how the chorus of the song goes, okay, without the music first, huh? So it goes, So blessed, I can contain it. Because you don't know what to do with it. So blessed, okay? I can contain it. Okay, so much... I've got to give it away. Very nice. So you receive so much, you have to give it away. Okay? Now this one, okay. Your love, okay, has taught me to live now. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand there are some of you who are a bit mobile and paired. Those 26 under, you're not, uh. you better dance with me. Uh. Okay? Those who, you know, struggle with conditions or whatnot, you don't have to jump, you can just like, you know, <laughs> you can just dance like that, yeah. Okay, just turn around or just dance on the spot, you know, make a joyful movement to the Lord today, okay? And then the last line, king of, uh, wait, 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 it's a, wait. <laughs> What's the last line again? Uh, you are more than enough for me. So it goes, you are more than enough for me, okay? I gave this one, but you can do a freestyle uh, for this last line, okay? All right, now let's try that with the music. Are you ready? Okay, just try just the chorus first, huh? I'm so blessed. Go! So blessed, I can't contain it. So much I gotta give it away. Your love has taught me to live now. You are more than enough for me. Wow! Can you all give yourselves a round of applause? That was beautiful. 
And you know, before we go into the song, I'm gonna show you guys a twist to the Your Love. Okay, down here, they came up with a really good idea, Daniel and Tiff. Okay, so for Your Love, what do you guys do? Okay, one, two, Your Love. Ah! Okay, so if, you're, if your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your partner, or just your close friend, you guys can form a heart shape with them. And let's worship the Lord together with joy as a church. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go. Come along. Half of the worship team, I just want to say really that, that encourages us so much to see you guys dance with joy and we can sense the joy of the Lord not just on the stage but on the ground as well because it is, you know, it's not our job up here to sing the nicest songs, it's our job to help you guys worship and we are so glad when we can see you guys worship with your full selves to the Lord from your hearts. So amen and thank God for that. And let's read this scripture together as we enter Genesis today, knowing that the story of Christ began at the very beginning. Let's read together from John chapter 1. 1, 2, 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. 
Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. You are the watch of the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name. Jesus, you laid your life down. My sin was great, your love was greater. Oh, I could separate us now. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Sing of your name, Lord. Cause death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised. Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Oh, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name of Jesus is. Can we just take a seat as we prepare for communion? <laughs> Good Friday and the Resurrection Sunday has just passed. And let us read from the passage, John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had just received the sour wine, 
and he said it, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The phrase, it is finished in Greek, is tete lestai. It's an interesting Greek word, and when Jesus uttered it, the word tete lestai, it means Jesus' work was completed. His work for our sins has been done. And scripture has been fulfilled. All the prophecies about Christ has been fulfilled. And this word, this Greek word, telestai, is in a perfect verb tense in Greek, which means completed in the past, but whose results continue into the present. So with the death of Christ, our sins became powerless to rule over us. Jesus destroyed the curse of sin. It is still true today and for all of us. Let us take some moments to reflect on that before we partake of the communion. Give all ourselves some time as we come before the Lord and think also for the confession of our sins that we have before we partake of the bread and wine. So if those of you who do not have the communion elements, please raise your hands and the ushers will bring them to you. Those of you with children, you can do it with your children. And those of you who are new here, uh, you have not of the faith, you can just observe with us. Last rip scripture, Luke 22, verse 19 to 22. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us all partake of the elements together. Can we all stand and pray? Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Lord, for what Christ has done for us, for dying on the cross for our sins. And thank you, Lord, it is finished because he has fulfilled the requirements so that our sins can be forgiven. And he has fulfilled prophecy, Father, and what he has done, the result of it continues today. So we can come before the throne and confess our sins, knowing, Lord, that we are right before you. And we are thankful, Father, for all that Christ has done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for us on the cross. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be led to the cross daily, that we will pick it up, die to ourselves, die to our earthly desires, and only live for you and you alone, Lord. And I thank you that everything, for everything that you have done for us in our lives, and I pray that we will live lives that are worthy of your calling. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. To the rehearsal of the Living Last Supper. What are you acting as? The Doubting Thomas. <laughs> My name is Simon. I used to be a member of the Zealots until Jesus called me. Like he's calling me now. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> and who are you guys? Uh, I'm Matthew. <laughs> okay. And I'm is Jesus. You are who? I'm Jesus. And you're who? I'm Jesus. <laughs> Blasphemy! 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 And who is this? Who does this scare you? A round of applause. <laughs> and, and who for? I, I don't know. You know, after I watched that video and I think about what happened on Friday, I, I realized we have so much to thank God for. I mean, for us who were acting on stage, we found that, that are we real? Because uh, we also wanted to go up and take the cross and the hearts and confess before the Lord, mm. didn't we, Daniel? And, and it was so moving uh, to see the church as one. Uh, we have so much to give thanks for that I felt that I, I told Daniel, sorry, uh, Daniel, this is very tall, I bring it down. Uh. Okay. I told Daniel, I want to do the announcements, this part, because this is so important. We celebrate our risen Lord, and that is such a, 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 an, a truth that cannot be compromised. Throughout Passion Week, so much happened in our church. Uh, we find that from the Monday to Thursday of Passion Week, it was an evening of prayer, that was opened up by the Koreans and Pastor Tehun there. And Pastor Tehun says, never before has he had evenings where 30 people showed up uh, to just quietly pray. And there was no like organized thing, right? You just mm. came and you just yeah. prayed. And there was a beautiful moment. You find also that in the Filipino Chinese congregations, it's an increase in numbers over the last week. Uh, the Nepali has begun tracting uh, before and after their services at Tekka Market. And again, more people are coming. 
guys, we might be running out of space, uh, which is a good thing. You can laugh. <laughs> Uncomfortable laugh, oh dear. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. And, and, and then after that, we, here we have the living last supper, and, and we weren't expecting. Somebody said when they stood at the foyer there, people were streaming. There was no gap, you know, just like heads and heads just came walking towards the door. And, and we never anticipated such an outpouring of hearts mm. at the different stations. And, and we're just so thankful. So here, guys, the video is ready. Uh, it's been nicely cleaned up with our new cameras, ta-da! And it's, yeah, that one's a new camera, so it, it, it follows you wherever, whoever's mouth is moving. And, and that's, that's a, we thank God for such devices. Um, so you may view that, and, uh, and for those of you who, who, who would like to enjoy it again, or you can bring it to your friends, that's an opportunity. Another group of people I want to talk about over Easter weekend is our Kingdom Jewels. Kingdom Jewels, where are you? Can you raise your hands? <laughs> Yay! Children, do you know there were so many of you who gave your life to Jesus Christ? So many of you said, I want Jesus to be my Savior. I want Jesus to be my King. Do you know how many of you raised your hands and that we have a record number? There were 49! Oh. Wow! When we hear that, I sometimes don't know to laugh or to cry because we are so happy. But that is what God is doing in your hearts. But we want you to grow. We want you to become more like Jesus, to understand His Word. But you know one problem we have? We don't have teachers. So those of us who don't have ministries already, can you all step up? Those of you who have been warming the seats, uh, sit on the uh, very nice, uh, the, the, the seat now worn out already, not doing anything, please uh, do something. Uh. Can you come and serve the Lord? Can you give your worship to the Lord by saying, I want to teach young people how to love the Lord, Amen. how to open His Word, right? Mm. How not to just tell cute, cute stories, but after cute, cute stories, then you also tell how this wonderful God is in my life because kids, you're having a hard time in school and at home, you've got so many things to think about. If you don't have Jesus, we are not doing a good job because we need teachers. So I have to say this for you all. Please seriously consider, we badly need teachers. So kindly sign up uh, at that QR code, talk to the team uh, of the KJ ministry. And with that, I will ask you to, yes. dear and uh, Daniel, to carry yeah. Yes, it is you. It is you. Get on with it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Indeed, we need to step up to serve at Kingdom Jewel, to, to serve. Right now, we also want you to step up and turn around and greet and welcome those around us. Shall we rise to our feet, step up, reach out to a few friends, say good morning, welcome to the house of the Lord. Especially friends, they are new to Bartley. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh yes, don't yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Don't worry, yeah. As I said just now, um, we want to, you guys to step up. Now is the time for the children to step up. <laughs> Please go to your kingdom jewel classes downstairs. Okay? Slowly, uh, please follow your teachers and head downstairs to level two to your kingdom jewel classes. Bye bye. While we dismiss the children, I uh, just want to make this quick announcement. If you're new to Bartley, uh, we would love to welcome you to the meeting point, and that's level one. The moment you exit the lift, turn left, for we really want to welcome you personally and get to know you. Okay, as the children leave, let me continue with the... No, let me, let me leave first. Nah. Okay, very good. 
With that, uh, shall we continue our time of worship through the giving of our tithes and offering? You know, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 says, Honour the Lord with your wealth and continue to say, with the first fruits of all your produce. And just as God was pleased with Abel's sacrifice and offering in Genesis, may we give to our Lord, may we offer to our God, may we honour God with our first fruits of our lives. Church, shall we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings? Uh, ushers, can I invite you to please pass the offering back? And for those who wish to give digitally, please follow the instructions on the screen. Church, before we pray for our tithes and offering, I have two really quick announcements to make. The first one is earlier in this year in February, Bartley uh, partnered with One for Jesus, where we distributed CNY Kit Pack as a tool to reach out to our loved ones and families and friends. As such, we will, at this stage, we would like to gather some feedback on this CNY Kit Pack. So if you have used it, if you have taken it and distributed it and gave it to your loved ones and friends, uh, please do scan this QR code and give us some feedback. Answer the three questions, really short, three yes and no questions. So if I would like to give you this time, since it's only three questions, yes and no, please whip up your phone and scan the QR code if you have participated in this uh, CNY kit pack where you give this uh, kit pack to your loved ones. If you have participated, uh, take this time to just quickly scan the QR code. It's really fast. Three questions, three yes and no only. So really give you some time, very short time to just scan. Okay, those who have scanned. Okay, so for our next announcement, um, please allow me to slow down and uh, for it's a, with a heavy heart that I have to announce the following. Bartley Christian Church is saddened that our missionary Tang Naite passed away and went home to the Lord last Monday on April 1st, 2024. From North East India, Tang Naite obeyed the Lord to serve as a missionary in 1982. Together with his wife Ching and their children, um, Gup and Nam, they left for Bangkok, Thailand in 1989 with OMF, Overseas Mission Fellowship, where he was involved mainly in church planting. In 2000, they moved to Manila, Philippines, where Tang taught at the Asian Theological Seminary for a decade. Then the Lord called them back to Thailand, where he worked in Chiang Mai, um, theological Seminary. Later, he became the Dean of Asia Cross-Cultural Training Institute, also known as ACTI, training missionaries while helming the role of regional leader of OMF uh, Northern Thailand. In 2018, Tang and Chin retired from OMF after 30 years of service. They returned to India with SIM East Asia as mobilization and training consultant, training missionaries, theological students, conducting consultation for mission leaders, and as well as mobilizing churches for missions. They were intentional in training and mobilizing the next generation to reach the unreached. Tang writes this, Since I was called to serve the Lord, 
I committed my life to reach the unreached, to tell the love of Christ so that no one should live or die without hearing the name of Jesus. Last year, during the month of February, Tang was diagnosed with lung cancer. And earlier this week, on Monday, April 1st, 2024, around 11.50 p.m. at City, Health City Hospital in Assam, India, his earthly journey came to an end. Tang was promoted to glory. Tang Naite lived his life reaching the unreached, loving the unloved, reflecting Christ to all. In quoting from William Borden, Borden Tang lived his life with no reserves, no retreat, and no regrets. He gave it all to Christ. He lived it all for Christ. Church, shall we keep his family, his wife, and his children in prayer? With that, shall we bow our heads and pray? Let's pray. Almighty and sovereign God, we lift up our missionary family, thank Naite, into your hands. May you grant them comfort and peace in this season of loss. May your presence comfort them. May your word grant them confidence and may your promises grant them hope. For it is in your word and in your promises that we know that they know that we'll, they, we will see Tang again in heaven. And as such, we thank you for the life of Tang Naite for the many years of devoted and faithful service to you, inspiring many towards missions across the globe, including us here at Bali. So Lord, as you have used Tang, we ask that you too will use each of us here for your kingdom's work. May you use us, may you use our tithes and offering of which we have just given to you. May it be a sweet aroma and offering to you. May you use it to expand your kingdom's work. Lord, now as we listen to your word, may you speak through Pastor Joe. May he be your mouthpiece, your messenger, your very servant of which now he reveals your heart to us. So Lord, we welcome your word. We welcome you to have your ways in our lives. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. there you have it. How do we carry on in a service where we rejoice and dance before the Lord, and yet we also have victory mixed with tears when we think of Tangai Te, and we lift up Ching 
into the Lord's hands in this time, this time of loss and mourning. And then you see a video like that that talks about how God made the earth and the heavens. It's, it's such a mixed feeling, but isn't that what our Christian faith is about? And somehow this last week, in our discussions between the pastors, myself, and we were just talking and we were just thanking God for what happened, suddenly a horrible question came to our mind. And the question is this, how firmly are we, the church, rooted in faith? How firmly are the Christians in Singapore rooted in faith? What does it mean to be rooted in faith? That, so we're asking here, are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, can they stay firm in their faith when there's so much going against them? Actually, sometimes we invite these things to come to us. What do I mean? Some of us are swayed and persuaded by clever arguments. Some of us go and find, like what Paul says, we, dis- we, 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 we find things which are very small and debatable, and we fight until the cows come home, and then we engage in frivolous talk. And where do we get these things from? What we've noticed is there are, they come from an array of untested theologians who appear on your platforms like TikTok, YouTube, the whole lot. We have got YouTube presentations coming with armchair pastors without any pastoral experience. And they state their, their, what they believe in, and then because we do not know how to handle our faith, we believe everything that we see because everything that comes appears on the screen means it's true. Lah. But haven't we been told to actually have a mindset to check these things against Scripture? to check these things with people who love the Lord and not blindly follow online theologians and armchair pastors. What we've noticed of late, and and sadly enough, what we've noticed is, you know, so many of our young, not even our young people, our Christians, actually have such a, a conflict of faith and sometimes they are so passionate with what they believe in that they tear down another person's faith. And I'm not talking about talking to the Buddhist, to the Muslim, and to the Hindu about their faith. No, you're talking to other Christians and you're tearing each other down. There's a loss of love. There's a loss of kindness. There's a, love of, there's a loss of understanding. There are differences, but are these things so important to understanding who our God is? and what he has called us to do? Do we move away from the orthodoxy of the church? And that means, this is a thing that was said to me in seminary, everything that we know about God or are allowed to know about God has already been explored. There is no new character about God that we do not know about that our forefathers had not known. Because scripture has not changed. So don't go and look for new discovery because that could be dangerous. We live in dangerous times. There are political and economic instabilities. We live in dangerous times because the winds of change challenge our foundations of faith. And not only challenge our faith, sometimes they fan the flame of fear. And the more frightened I am, and because I don't have a foundation, I go to what comes to me easily. I'm so afraid that I replace a right understanding of God with what I fear. I'm so afraid that I displace God as master, sovereign king of my life because I must watch that YouTube because this guy said it right. These are dangerous times. I do not want us to find that we are building our house on the rock and our house that we think is on a rock and it turned out to be on sand. Can we tell the difference? Can we truly tell the difference between the truths about God that does not change in time with human thoughts that are transient? And so this is why we want to introduce to you the book of Genesis. We need to go back to the start, lah. 
The book of Genesis, is been, we have actually carved it up into three sections, so we're not going to finish all the book in this whole year. That's, that's almost not, not possible. We are actually going to stretch this to three years. So for 2024, it will be 12 chapters. How does this build foundation? Build foundation in this way. Ah, some of you who are visitors here, you may not know, we've got this thing here going for this year onwards. It's, say it with me. Foundations deep, love surround, missions go. Foundations deep, love surround, missions go. Because if my foundation is clear and I know who my God is and what He wants me to do, I build love in all that I deal with, in leadership, one another, my cell group leaders, my MC, my DG, with my children, with the family, with difficult people. We build love so that together we can go in missions and we can talk about our Lord Jesus because our lives have been consistent as much as we can. And so what is foundation deep in Genesis? This is foundation deep. deep. In Genesis, I hope you will learn who God is. We need to understand God as much as our mind can contain Him, which is almost impossible. And once we know who our maker is, then that asks the questions, who are we? Because He made us. Surely there's a reason why He made us. And now, what are we here for? which then leads to the question, whose do we belong? Who, whose are we? Who do you belong to? If I belong to God the Father through Jesus Christ and, and, and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that means there's something very precious about me He wants me to do. So what am I to do? So from, from Genesis, this is our hope, that we would learn to lift out the gospel faith in these dangerous times. And so here is your broad strokes for 12 weeks of Genesis. Quickly broken up into four sections. The first here, we're going to look, and oh, if you are wondering, uh, aren't you going to talk about, uh, today's sermon is about the introduction to the book of Genesis. If you're going to ask me, hey, how come you don't tell me who's the author and all that? Because Pastor Mayor Bing has done a fantastic job, okay? I want to affirm Pastor Yao Bing. I don't know where you are, but I'm sure he, he will be watching this. Pastor Yao Bing has led uh, online, I think, one and a half hour class. I'm not sure. On Genesis, so we talk about who's the author, what's the time period, and what were the different thoughts about it, what are the main themes. All those things are best covered in a class. But for purposes of our 40 minutes here, this is what I will, be, I will want to introduce to you in broad strokes. We're going to talk about creation of heaven and of earth, of the contents of sea, sky, and land. And what does that show about God? But then God loves us so much, He also made man. But why did he bother to make men? Does God need us? Is God incomplete without us? And then we talk about the fall. What happened in the fall when man said, I want to go my way. Lah. God, your way, not, your way a bit fussy. I go my own way. What results from the fall? What are the consequences? Somewhere in between there, Mother's Day. And then after that, we'll go to the flood. <laughs> Flood, rush, 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 rush. Then we got the rainbow, and then we talk about uh, uh, Noah himself making a mess of his life because he enjoyed too much wine, and he made a mess. And then somewhere in between there, we got Father's Day. No reflection on the fathers or mothers. Okay, just just the calendar fell that way. And since we are talking about Father's Day, then we end off with the call of Abraham to be the father of nations. And what God's call is that the people of God be a blessing to the whole earth. To the whole earth. So I know we, we did a lot of actions huh, today, so glad and all that. Uh, <laughs> I can't contain it. I got another new one to teach you, okay? I just need you to lend me your hands, okay? So your left hand, if you put this up, this is to say that God made it good. And then, with your, then after that, we, then men made a mess. Men ruins what is good. Can we do that again? Go. God made it good, men made a mess, and God restores our mess. Try again. God made it good, men make a mess, God restores our mess. And that's going to be the theme of today's whole sermon, all right? 
I will be actually uh, talking to you f- not from the book of Genesis because that's too predictable. Imagine I start the book of Genesis 1, right? Then next week, the preacher talking about Genesis 1. What's he going to talk about? Not fair, lah. And so I realized, why don't I look at Genesis but with a mirror passage? And the mirror passage is from the book of John. They are very similar. Scholars have seen, why did John write after the, like, the book of Genesis? And so throughout this sermon, there are just two sections in my sermon here. First, we're going to talk about God and man. The second one, we're talking about light and darkness. Okay, so hang on with me. We're going to go on this, right? We're going to be jumping between Genesis and John, and it is going to be quite interesting. So I start first with John, which is my message and my, my focus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. Who's this God we're talking about? This God, later you will find out his name is Jesus. Jesus is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is God? Yes, Jesus is God, but he was with God the Father, and later the Holy Spirit will come into the picture. So in Genesis 1, right from the very beginning, this is our God. But you compare that with Genesis 1. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word. Genesis 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I love this because just this line alone tells me so much of who God is. In the beginning means, in the beginning of what? The Roman Empire? If you want to go back before that, if not the Roman Empire, then what? The Assyrian Empire? If not the Assyrian, how much back you want to go back? The Grecian Empire? Mesopotamian? China? God is even before time. In the beginning, God. Who is this God? He's just been there. God is before time. And what did he do? He created. He made. He called to existence ex nihilo. From nothing, he created something. If you look around, everything you see on your body with your eyes came from something. Even your children had to come from something, which is your own body. The very t-shirt, the very shirt you're wearing had to come from cotton. Cotton had to come from a tree or plant. The plant had to come from the ground. The ground had to come from where? If you go on, you find that this verse is precious. In the beginning, God created because only God can create from nothing. And did he just create the earth and then the sky happened to fall? No. He created both the heavens and the earth. That's quite a wide expanse. In fact, if you read scripture, you will find that God looks down and when he looks down, he sees the top of heaven. And then beyond the top of heaven, he sees earth. So our God is even higher than heaven. How much higher is kind of God is there? This is our God. And the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God. Ta-da! The Holy Spirit comes in. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And then God separated the light from the darkness. Therefore, you have day, God calls the day, light day, and the darkness, he calls night. There was evening, and there was morning, day one. That is just so amazing because God, who is beyond time, God who's beyond the measure of time, which is an invention of man, his presence with Christ and the Spirit created day and night. So bear this in mind, guys. God made the heavens. Well, no. God didn't make the heavens. God made even higher than the heavens and everything of the earth down to the lowest point of your sea. And the galaxies that they're still trying to figure out how far we are. God made all that. And this is our God. With Him, there is no beginning. With Him, there is no end. 
And that so contrasts with us creatures. We who are created, we have a beginning, we have an end, we have an expiration date. We got sell by date, you know. Don't we all feel it, those of us who are over 50, some strange things happen to our body. No lah, from 40, something happens to your eyes. Then you don't know why you need special glasses. And then the, the knees start going. And then when old people like me come together, the first thing we ask, hey, what are you taking for your knees? Ah? Oh, you know why I'm taking it? can't sleep at night. Ah? Because we have an expiration date coming. But our God is not like that. Let's go to John. What does John say? John 1 verse 2 says, He, that means Christ, the Word, was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. That means nothing came to existence if Jesus did not call it to existence. So that means the question we ask now is, who is man? Because you and I exist. Christ Jesus called us to existence. I quickly jump back to Genesis. How did man come to be? Here we read that in Genesis 1, verse 5, they had no shrub on the earth, no plant had sprung up, there was no need for rain, so rain didn't fall from the top. In the time of Genesis, water rose from the ground. Some people think it's mists. Some people think that's how watered the earth. And it watered the surface of the ground. And then, verse 7, the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And one of the most precious things I have learned is that in all of creation, God spoke them into being. And later on, when you read in Genesis, when God created man with his own hands, he shaped man. Brothers, sisters, you all have been touched by God before you even know it. And you and I are infinite. We all, um, all of us are finite, not infinite. We're all finite. God is infinite. We are limited. We have a start and stop date. And yet we are made by God. And we cannot make, remake ourselves. And therefore, we share a likeness of God. It says that we are made in the image of God. He shares with us some things, of some characteristics of who He is. He says, I love these people and they are called humans. They are made in my image. I give them characteristics for love. I give them char characteristics of being, um, there are theological terms for that, I won't go into that. But there are some things that God shares with us and there are some things that God does not share with us. Like we cannot be in three places at the same time. Only God can, He's only present. But some things he shares with us, he makes us knowledgeable so that we might know. But one thing is clear. We will never, we can never, ever be like God. We can never, ever be like God. Ultimately, we have become a humankind where we are rooted, anchored, and established in how God made us. This is God's plan for us. This is God's plan for us. If God called you, if God shaped you with His own hands, you are precious to Him. He has called you for a purpose. And so here is the recurring theme in Genesis that God made it good. Where does the ruin come in then? Where does the ruin come in? I'll be talking to you right now from the book of Genesis 1 to Genesis 12, four stories. So you, you, you hang on with me, the four stories, Ken. The four stories are basically, number one, the creation story. And that's what we're going to start first. God created everything good. Because you know what? God never makes anything not good. He's the perfect God. Why should He make something imperfect? He makes it all good. And then when He shaped you, the human with His hands, when He breathed from His nostrils into you, the ruach, which is the breath of God, what did He say when you were completed? 
He says, all of creation is very good. The giraffe, the anemones, the plants, the bats, they're all good. But hey, this one got likeness of me. I think it's very good. You and I, God calls us, His creation, very good. Story one. Story two. God said to man, I've made all things good. You can eat anything. I just want you to learn to obey me. You can eat of any tree in the garden except for one. Do not eat this tree from this tree because you will die. And so Adam and Eve say, hmm, this garden, very nice. Huh? Got all sorts of fruit. But then I wonder why uh, there's always more thrill in the mystery. There's more fun in the disobedience. And so you find that they ask themselves this question, or the serpent asked them this question, did God really say, can his words really be true? Souls doubt. And then after that, they say, do you know, did God really say that you won't die? No lah, you will carry on living. Don't worry. God bluff him. God doesn't tell the truth. Your eyes will instead be open. And then Adam and Eve think, if my eyes are going to be open, oh, I want to live forever because I want to know what's good and, and what's evil too. I, I want to know what evil is. In fact, I think God gave me a wrong advice. I can do better than him. So I don't do what he asked me to do. And then at the end of it all is, I want to be God. I want to be God because I want to know all things. Why is God not trusting me with all things? My way is better. So what God made good, man ate the fruit in disobedience and we made a ruin. Man ruins what is good. Story number three. There you find the human race, all sinful right now multiplying across the earth. The human race has been recorded for us that the heart is wicked. The heart is wicked and all it thinks about is evil all the time. So in the days of Noah, you find that the flood came where God says, I created all good. I let you go out into the world to proclaim my glory. And all you want to do is to increase wickedness and evil and so, this is what you have done. And therefore, I will flood the earth. I will wipe out all mankind from the face of the earth, except for the family of Noah, because they are righteous. God called us to multiply. Man says, nah, no need. Don't follow God's way. And God caused judgment. Fourth story is the story of Babel. Here you find, man says, you know what? I want to build a city for myself because you know what? I want the neighbours to be jealous about me. Sounds like some of our, our, our neighbourhoods here <laughs> compete with neighbour next door. <laughs> the house must be nicer, Christmas lights must be brighter. Are, are humans like that? We want to create a tall tower, build a city for ourselves, make a name, and then we don't scatter across the earth. Ah, let's congregate together. We're all speaking the same language, right? So no problem to build this monstrous building, which is good for us. Then we can become strong and famous. God called the nations to being to glorify Him, but they wanted to glorify themselves. God called them to be scattered around the earth to proclaim His glory across. And they said, no, let's gather and build one city. One city enough, ah, we'll be very strong. Do you know what? From these stories, sadly, some things don't change in 2024. Do you find that sometimes we don't trust the words of God? You say, God, I think you really don't know what's best for me. I think I know better. I'm just going to go my way. Thank you very much for your advice. Thank you, but no thank you. We take his commands lightly. We don't value his words. We're frivolous about it. We're more concerned about living for a long time, to have a legacy. We want to live our lives on our terms, not on God's terms. 
does that sound like Babel? Does that sound like Noah's time? Sometimes I find my heart is wicked. My heart is evil. My thoughts are evil. I badly want to make a name for myself. I want to be able to stand proud and say that I proved you wrong and I'm successful. It's all about me. You know, when God is left out of the picture, what God has made good, we ruin it. When God is left out of the picture, what he made good, we ruin it. I'm going to tell you a story about my grandmother. Some, so many of you are wondering what kind of background I come from. I'm Singaporean. My, my parents are Pranakan Indonesians. And so this picture, small as it is, Oma is uh, the middle row on the extreme left. You can't see very clearly, yeah. Um, but, but suffice to say, this is my grandmother. Her name is Yapko Jinyo, and we call her Oma because in my family, we, my, my mom and dad spoke Dutch. And so uh, when relatives come, they all speak Dutch, being a Dutch colony. Hailing from Padang, Indonesia, um, where you get nasi padang from. So Grandma Oma was a wonderful cook, and so was my mom. Uh, they were educated in the Dutch education system. For those times, rare to educate women, but Oma was educated very well. She came to Singapore poor, and that's another story I have to reserve another time for you. She came to Singapore poor and made a living just by, my mom and made a living by sewing kabaya clothes, just sewing and uh, embroidering. But what what Oma had in her hands was the Bible. And she read the Dutch Bible because there were no Indonesian Bibles available then. So from Bethesda Katong, she would lead these ladies in Bible study. That's what mom told me. These are Bible study ladies from Katong, where they would, she would read in Dutch. <laughs> Dutch, uh, like that. Like, I think it's like, like learning to spit like this. <laughs> Sorry, uh, any of you Dutch here? <laughs> It's actually very beautiful, but all I hear is And then there she would speak in Bahasa Indonesia and she would teach the ladies from scripture. That's my grandmother. I mean, it's a wonderful heritage. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but the other thing about Grandma Oma is that if you talk to some people in Katong right now, usually they have to be in their 60s and 70s and they say, Ayo, Yap Kojinyo is your grandmother. And they say, My mother remembered her. That's what Ruby said to me. And Ruby is somebody from there. And she said, we're very scared of your grandmother, no? <laughs> and we found out why. Because grandma was like that, right? If you make noise in church, she'll just glare at you and you will just dissolve in thin air. <laughs> if the children run, uh, make noise, uh, she will reach out and she'll pinch the child. This is the house of God. Behave yourself. And so I grew up, my mom had to teach me that even if someone was walking behind you, you actually move forward so that the person can move, so get more space. That when you go between chairs because you're late, and then the question is, why are you late for church? Uh, grandma's like that. Why are you late for church? She, she's that, of that generation. If you are late and you have to pass by people, you, you have to put this, which is a very Indonesian thing, put your hand down and excuse me, excuse me, and you apologise. So grandma was very particular about these kind of things. This is my Oma. But you know what? Despite her ability to teach, despite her fierceness and the horror stories I hear about her in church in Katong, sadly when Oma died, only memories of her remain to those of us who knew her. We as persons, we also fade in time. Do you know? I know my Oma's name because I go visit her grave every year. She's next to mom, she's next to dad, she's next to my uncle, no, my cousin. I know the name because of that. But do you know, for the life of me, I don't know what's my grandfather's name. Do you know that my children won't even know what my mother's name is? How many of you know the name of your great-great-grandfather? We have a start and stop date lah we will also fade in time. I'm not slamming down my grandmother here. Please don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, however effective she was in the church, she also had an aspiration date. So let's go back to the book of Genesis slash John. 
God who made the heavens and the earth and all the contents, God who called us to being, suddenly called us precious in His eyes. He formed us with His hands. We have a shelf life. We have an aspiration date. And what is sad is that if we just remain that, then we forget who, if we, we need to remember who God is so that we know who we are. Let me show you another perspective right now from Colossians. Present in the creation of mankind is Christ the Son. Colossians 1 verse 15. Can you all read this out for me together? For those of us who are deaf, sign with me, can? Okay, ready, go. The Son is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. We carry on reading. For he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. Brothers and sisters, this is Christ present at the creation of the world, of the heavens, created when we were made he has supremacy. So if you have all this of God watching over you, then I ask you, what do you fear? Because if God is in charge of all things in heaven and on earth, sorry, the last time I checked, there's nobody else I know that is in charge of heaven and earth. My God is a great God. If I am fearful, I'm fearful of things invisible or visible. What I can see can be quite frightening. What I don't see sometimes is worse. What I don't know, my future, I'm scared of that. I'm scared what kind of diseases will come my way. But then if he created all things visible and invisible, doesn't he have charge over me? Thrones, powers, rulers, authorities, whether governments or kingdoms or bosses, our God is bigger than all of them because He created them for Himself. He created them because of Him. What are you frightened about? And the way to look at life is to remember God made all that. God made me. But God, through Christ, has called all things to being. And if I'm one with Christ, am I then not in a safe place? Now we go to the second section of this sermon, John 1 verse 4. In Him was life. And we talk about light and darkness here. John 1 verse 4, in Him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. In Christ, there's life and there's light. And this light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. As I think of, 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 of uh, Tang going home to the Lord, I'm somewhat jealous because he can see the light because he can testify that the darkness has not overcome it. But isn't this what you and I shared here on Resurrection Sunday? The beautiful thing about Resurrection Sunday, it, it talks about life over death, light over darkness. And this is where we find that God may proclaim it's good, we make a mess of it. God will bring a better restoration with our mess. Let's take our four stories bit by bit, okay? In all of creation, God made the world beautiful. It was good, and when he made man, it was very good. 
And this is the beauty of it all. God gave us everything. But we thought, God, yeah, why are you didn't give me the little corner, you know, that tree of good of knowledge of good and evil. I want that too. God, I think my plan is better, and that becomes ruined. And the fall of man happened, and God had to kick us out of the garden. And there in this garden, you find God proclaim punishment on women. Why does God punish? Because He's a God of justice and law. If I tell you not to do it, and you do it, and I let you get away with it, I am only, I'm only rewarding wrong. But I told you not to do it, but you've done it, so therefore there's the consequences to it. And these are the consequences. For the woman, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. So before the fall, childbearing was a joy and pleasure. For the men, since the fruit on the tree of good and evil was so tempting to you, then everything that you want to put in your mouth, you have to work with your hands and your sweat and your sweat and your sweat and your sweat so that from your sweat it will produce food to eat. And after you eat, after a while, when your time comes, boom, you're dead and you are dust. For the serpent, then you say, oh, you're so depressing. It is true, it is depressing. Men cannot save ourselves. To the serpent, Aka, the devil, the evil one, this was the punishment for him. Not only will he crawl in the belly of his, on, on, on the ground, but he will put an enmity, he will make an enemy, a tension between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, between evil and between good. This one will bruise your head. He will squash the head of the evil one. This one is none other than Christ. But you will strike his heel because he will suffer on the cross. Which is better, to have struck on the heel or to be crushed in the head? And not only Satan is crushed, death is crushed. God made good. Man made a mess. God says, I give you a promise. I give you Christ. Let's go to the next story. Here you find that you have the flood. The people were saying, let's multiply, let's do things our way. There's wickedness, there's evil. And then it became bad. And God annihilated all of men. And, and they were... Oh, I forgot one point I have to tell you. My mistake, sorry. There's something very important when we talk about the purpose of man. When you think about the purpose of man, what is the purpose of man? In the catechism, it says, the Westminster Shorter Catechism says, what is the chief end of man? This is the true meaning of life. The chief end of man is this, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. This is the chief end of man, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And this is how God made good at Eden. He made what is good, we made what is, we made, made it to ruin, and God said, from here I will give you Christ, so that I will be glorified, and you can enjoy me forever. What does it say about people at the flood? The flood says, I want to do it my way, I'm wicked. I want to have evil. And yet God says, I will annihilate you. I will wipe you off the surface of the earth. But I'll give you a promise of a rainbow. And the promise of the rainbow is that God will preserve mankind. God will preserve mankind. God will protect and restore the earth to its former Edenic glory. And so that begs the question here, how does God restore that? And for what purpose? So that His glory will go out to all the earth. The third story is in man's cleverness at Babel. Here, God says, I want you to grow and proclaim my glory to all the nations. Babel say, nah, let's build our own kingdom, our own tall tower, and we will build this for ourselves. And God caused that punishment, and that punishment is you will be broken out into many, many languages, so you will be confused. 
And so the Tower of Babel fell, and people scattered throughout all the earth. And God says, "Uh uh-huh, I will make good. How will I make good? Many, many thousand years later, where God at Pentecost came down the Holy Spirit and there were nations all around Jerusalem and suddenly they were all abuzz when the Holy Spirit fell on them and they all spoke one language and they all understood and that language was the gospel language and they understood about Jesus Christ. At one time you have the languages all confused. At another time God makes restoration. All languages are restored. There we glorify God and we enjoy Him forever. For the call to Abraham, Abraham, I call you to be a great nation. God called it and it was good. But Abraham does fall and he does sin from time to time. The work of Abraham, while we are grateful for it, is not going to be lasting. We hope that we were going to glorify God together through the nations but through the people of of Israel that God called, they could not glorify God. In fact, when Jesus came, he was skeptical about what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. They thought they were glorifying God, but no. So what then is the recurring theme here? It's a very sad news, sad, sad news. You know, when you think about creation, we all fail to take care of the earth. When you think about creation, we we fail to be kind to the earth. Humankind has failed. When you think about the sons of Adam, even Cain killed his own brother Abel. When you think about Noah, Noah after the flood, he got himself drunk because he got too happy making wine from the grapes he planted. And he exposed himself and his nakedness to his son, declared a curse on the son of Ham and the generations of Canaan. Abraham... Yeah, a descendant, his descendants never made lasting peace and covenant with God. We all fail. Such cheerful news for Genesis, huh? Opening service. But you know what? This is the good news. All of us humans will fail except for one. The one who was present at the creation of the world. His name is Christ. Only Christ will satisfy. God made good we mess it up. God takes what we mess up and gives us something better than our mess. And the only one who could fulfill that is Christ our Lord. So you want to build your firm foundation throughout this Genesis series? Build the foundation, learn who our God is. He's an amazing God. Then learn, who am I? Because God called me to be. And then whose am I? I belong to him. Will you join me in a while? I'm going to ask you to stand to have a confession of what we call the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed are the main pillars of our Christian faith since the formation of the early church. And we say, and these truths do not change because that describes who our God is and describes who we are and it tells us what we are to become. And this is the Apostles' Creed indeed. One phrase that you will find used is that I believe in the Holy Catholic Church and I have to teach us here that the Holy Catholic Church means it is the true church of Jesus Christ, our Lord, for all times, at all periods, and all places. All right, so that's what it means. So please, can you rise? And will you just declare with, in song and with your lips as we sing this together? creating one God almighty through your Holy Spirit conceiving Christ the Son praises our Savior I believe in God our Father 
I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection when we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's declare, I believe. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in the virgin birth I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again for I believe in the name of Jesus I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, when we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Let's give glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, Father, we just bow our knee and we say, God, who are we that you would choose us from all of creation to be worthy to share an image with you? 
Who are we, O God, that when we fall to sin, you make right of our mess and you give us better than what we can do for ourselves? Who are we to accept eternal life through our Lord Jesus, who died, buried, rise again, and who shall return, and whom we shall meet in glory? Who are we that you seal us with the Holy Spirit and you call us the church, that we bear the name of Christ? Oh, Father, will you work in our hearts and remind us of who you are and what you think of us so that we might know who we are. And in so doing, we will step up to the plate and become what you want us to be, gospel bearers, to bring healing to the, those who are in need of healing, to free the prisoners, to bind the wounds of those who are hurt, to walk alongside the suffering, to bring light in darkness, that they might also bow the knee and call you Lord and Saviour. And so may we go with your blessing upon us from 2 Peter chapter 1. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, his divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to His own glory and excellence. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, our gracious Father, our God, three in one. We give you thanks. And God's people together we say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you in this week to come. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by.